folks how are we all doing and welcome to my channel so this is august's book club choice video and it was mrs england by stacy halls and this was one of the books i think i got it was it the beginning of this year i think it was on world of books and when it came i thought i think i'll put that in the reading group reading book club and it's one of the ones that you know when you buy a book and it comes and then you wait that long to read it you've kind of lost your mm for it but it came and I started it and I was like this feels like it's a really slow start and at first I was like I hope this book doesn't continue like this because if it does it's going to be a nightmare because it just seemed to take ages to get going but as I as I started to get further and further into the book one of the things I realised was that I think that was purposeful because I think it was that type of a story where there was so much mystery, intrigue, uncertainty, so many shadows in all of the different people that we've read about. And for those of you that have read it, you know that it's about a, a, a nurse, a children's nurse that is part of a really exclusive um, nursing school, children's school, and she works with, that, that, that send nurses out to the rich and famous, well, not the rich and the, the elite of the time. And the, the family that she's working with, Ruby, they're going abroad to live, and Ruby can't, for personal reasons, go with them abroad. So she goes back to the school and asks for another post. And she's sent to Yorkshire, to a, a mill family in Yorkshire. And it's very different from London. And it's the Lord of the Manor that comes to pick her up. The wife, Mrs England, you, she's not there. And actually, in, in those times, she kind of should have been there. Because that's what the Lady of the Manor did. They they did the housework running and they they, they organised what was happening with the children. They may not have been hands-on, but they were still there. And everything's mysterious and everything's not what it seems. And there's a tension in the house and there's issues with other servants in the house. And then we've, then we've got the teacher, Mr Booth, that made me laugh because that's my surname. Because it's a Yorkshire surname. And... One of the things when it started, I thought, this is giving me vibes. Oh, it's giving me Bronte vibes. I know it's in Yorkshire, the moors and stuff, and, and it's near to Bradford from what I could see in this book. But it was giving me giving me Bronte vibes. And as far as with the school teacher, the schoolmaster, Mr Booth, that was looking after the son as a private tutor, I, I was like wondering when he came into it, is this a little bit of the old Bramwell Bronte coming through? And did she get a little bit of that inspiration from the Brontes? Um, but it did move away from that, but it did keep throughout it, you know. I mean, obviously there's gonna be spoilers in this, as you find out that Mrs. England was very much like Mrs. Robinson, and, you know, Bramwell Bronte had an affair with the lady of the manor that he was a school teacher at. It was this female again of her time that had to get married to a certain type of man, had to abide by his laws, had no had no sense of sovereignty herself. Um, and you know, women didn't. And there's actually some questions at the end of this. I don't know if you if it was in your copy, which I'm gonna go through, and you can go through them with me if you want, and answer them in, in the in the comment section. Um it was just, sometimes I did get a little bit frustrated with Ruby though. I did get a little bit frustrated with her because there were times where I thought, come on, can't you see this? Or what are you doing? Because there's some points that she really does leave herself open for invulnerability. Um, yeah, did you find that? Um, Very strange, very mysterious. Did I like it as much as the familiars? Because I think the familiars, I think, don't quote me on this, was Stacey Hall's first book, um, which is based on the Pendle Witches. I didn't, I don't like to, well, am I comparing it? I liked it in a different way. It's a very different book. But again, it focuses on women and 
you know, with that one, what's the, what's the SN Asylum energy in that one as well? I can't remember. There was a wife. I know there was a wife. I do forget books, you see. I know there was a wife in that. Um, but we know that the men of the day, they, they accused you of being a witch or they accused you of being, you know, unhinged and... It was getting that way for Mrs. England. Should we look at these questions then? Because the questions I found intriguing. So, reading group questions, and they are at the back. So, question one. Mrs. England begins when Ruby moves from London to an isolated Yorkshire town. How do the landscape and setting influence the story in this novel? So, the bleakness of it, the bleak life that Ruby has where there's very little colour, very little vibrancy, going out into the wilderness, not sure of where she's going, not sure of where she's going in her own life. Um, and the hustle bustle of London to the moors of Yorkshire where she's then forced to look at her life. She's forced to look at her existence and she's forced to look at the past. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. How does training as a Norland nurse affect the trajectory of Ruby's life? Well, it gives it substance. It gives it direction. It gives it routine. Because those days when you went to work as a nurse or you went to be a servant or a lady's maid, it was structure and routine. And I wonder if... A lot of people that worked in those areas were looking for that and needing that. It gave you a purpose, even though it was looking after somebody else's children, somebody else's home, somebody else's clothes. It gave you a purpose and a position in a big story of which you were a wheel in that story. Um, many different cogs and you were a wheel. Um, and... It, it enabled her to t send money home and it enabled her to get out of her mother's clutches as well because there was a weird thing with the mother, wasn't it, Ruby's mother? There was a weird energy there, strange. Um, what do you think? Let me know. Question three. What did you make of Mrs England as a character? How did your perception of her change throughout the book? At first, she gave me Mrs Robinson vibes. Um, and then I got like the Jane Eyre vibes of the wife in the attic and there was the elements of Jane Eyre in this as well I found um, you know although she was a governess Jane Eyre not a nurse but very similar family, children, rich family wealth um, throughout the whole book with Mrs England's character I, I was going through periods of is it actually going to end up where it's Mr England that's the victim in all of this and that he has got this crazy wife and then you'd be shown another perspective and it kept you guessing I, I felt it kept you guessing of what was coming up um, and then towards the end what did you think of that though at the end where she says to Ruby Oh, by the way, here's a letter that came a couple of days for you, but I forgot to give it to you. I think that's how it ended. And I just thought, hmm, did we ever find out what was in that letter? Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot to give this to you, she said. I looked at the postmark dated three days before and put it in my apron. She smiled and her jet earrings, earrings danced. I wonder if, was Mrs. England keeping those letters because she didn't want, she knew that she had this nurse that had come in that she could have all to her, a bit of a comradeship because it was a lonely place for her. Interesting. What do you think? Let me know. It's your nose. Um, how does the novel explore the theme of marriage? Interesting. It really does. It explores the theme of marriage for the rich and for the poor um, and the powerlessness of it all really because obviously the rich marriage the England's marriage it was a marriage of duty and convenience but the whole power of the woman was lost 
and the man ruled, especially the rich men ruled. If you married a, a titled man or a rich man, you know, he could pay doctors to say certain things. He had power in the community and it was never him in the community. The community always judged you, the female, as the one that was out of step. You should be lucky to be married, especially if he was rich. I mean, he's not richer than Mrs. England, because as the book develops, you find out that Mrs. England had a child and a marriage to someone else, and her family wanted to cover that up. So they got her married to Mr. England. Um, and then you see the marriage of the Booths, and that was interesting because that looked like a shotgun wedding, didn't it? Where she got pregnant and he had to marry her because that's what they did back then. They, they felt obliged to marry. But there was this element where Mr. Booth had an attraction to Ruby. There was that that attraction there and that sadness that you got the feeling that he wasn't as happy with Blaze, who was his wife, Mrs. Booth, that he should have been or could have been. And you saw marriage from her perspective as well, where she gave up her life. She had to give up your job, your career. Her, her career became the home and they, they, they tied themselves to the houses. They had immaculate houses. It was cooking, cleaning, um, child rearing, pregnancy, gossip with the other women of the street. And yeah, interesting. Um, and then there was the, the, the marriage of Ruby's parents, which, the father had mental health issues, serious mental health issues, and ended up in Broadmoor. And, but with that one, do you not get the feeling that it was the wife in that that ran the show? I did. And, and talking to you guys about it, I really feel that it was the wife that ran the show there. Um, yeah. And did that add to some of his mental health issues? So, depending on the character, the time, depending on circumstance, who was the strongest, who was the weakest. Um, do you think that the, 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 the lower class women had more power over their husbands than the upper class? Possibly not, again, depending on who you married, because there would have been some really draconian working class men, lower class men. Um, interesting. But marriage does, I mean, the, the whole of the book, well, the vast majority of the book is about the England's marriage, which was caught, which was cold, um, torturous, isolating, painful. Yeah. Question five. What similarities can you see between Ruby's family and the England's? How does Ruby's upbringing influence her behaviour? Mental health issues. Um, I think we've covered that in the previous questions to some extent that Mr England was the more domineering one but in Ruby's upbringing it was her mother that was the more that, that seemed to be the most domineering one and the secrets and the lies and the fact that children were not actually placed in any kind of importance or Safety, the fact that, you know, Ruby's dad pushed her and her sister off of a bridge into the Thames. And her mother didn't really care. It was all about the dad. And similar themes run in with the Englands where um, there were certain times where the children were left, left exposed and the parents were caught up in their own pain. So we've got the Englands caught up in their own pain and we've got the, the Ruby's family caught up in their own pain as well. And I think that upbringing definitely um, influenced her behaviour, Ruby's behaviour. Um, it kind of gave her a steeliness, I think, and an ability to switch off and go cold. Because I think, you know, in order to be in that England house, she kind of had to, because there was so much tension and strange energy. How does the novel look at gender and gender roles at this point in history? We've kind of covered that, you know, rich women losing their power, losing their everything, having to look at the home, 
the man ruling, similar energy in the lower class homes. Um, the fact that when you fall pregnant back then you had to marry the person, gender obligations from the men. Um, the need for freedom as well, especially with Mr. Booth and Wales, not Wales, <laughs> Mr. Booth wanting to go to Australia. Um, and obviously Ruby not wanting to go to Australia when the opportunity came up. Um, the whole thing with the doctor as well, the fact that Ruby was trying to help him and guide him and he didn't want to know. I think there's still energy, there's still parts of that out there today, today's world, um, where men can really struggle, some men can really struggle with the opinions of women. What is uniquely Edwardian about this novel? How do you think the story might have played out differently if set in another point in time? I don't know. I mean, there was the Edwardian element of the Englands because, and the elite and the schools they had and the roles they had. I think unless it was written a hundred years more modern or 200 years more back. I don't know. I think the Edwardian era was just as limited as the Victorian. Although women were starting to get more freedom. They were starting to branch out more in the world. Um, interesting. As a nurse, Ruby's class position is complicated. How does the novel examine the role of class and money, class and money in someone's life? Well, choice, the fact that at the end of the book, she gets some money off Mrs. England and all of a sudden the game changes and she's got choice. Um, and when you're lower class, there was very little choice for you. You couldn't get an education as with Ruby's sister. Um, you know, elite, you could, the rich, they could go and get education. They had a choice of education, a choice of home, a choice of food. Um, but... When you were poor in the lower classes, you didn't have that back then. Um, you had There was a make, do and mend energy. And I think make, do and mend is important because I think now, the times we live in now, where we live in such a throwaway culture, we need more of that make, do and mend energy coming in. But with a different kind of vibrancy through it. Um, what do you think Ruby feels for Mr. Booth? I feel she was attracted to him. I do feel as though she was attracted to him. And it was a, ca a case of in a different life, in a different time. Um, and it made me think about how many people from that generation would have found themselves in similar situations where they didn't really marry the people that they really loved. It was through obligation or pregnancy or class or whatever and how that affects today's generation because these were the ancestors that were marrying for reasons that weren't entirely they found they felt they were honorable but they possibly weren't fully from the heart and i think yeah i think ruby felt an attraction to mr booth why do you think ruby's father did what he did mental health issues um, could there be a possibility that the children weren't his because there is that element in um, the Englands could he have found something out about them could it have been an issue that he had with his wife and he didn't want to see it with his daughters interesting actually and I didn't realise that until looking at these questions um interesting and again women weaker sex um interesting actually what do you think let me in the comments and final question which is question level level question 11 what do you make of the novel's closing paragraph yeah i think that's left open should we read it again i'm sorry i forgot to give this to you she said I looked at the postmark dated three days before and put it in my apron. She smiled and her jet earrings danced. Was it six of one and half a dozen of another? 
Was there a lot more to Ruby's letters going missing? Was there more manipulation from Mrs England than we think? Was Mr England more of a victim than we think? Were they both as bad as each other in different ways? Were they both victims as well in different ways and all of it? I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. It was a slow one. I liked the gothic themes. I liked the Bronte themes. There were lots of Bronte themes. Jane Eyre, Branwell Bronte. Um, there was a scene in the pub which had Branwell Bronte elements to it as well. And the, and the Black Bull in Haworth. Um, I enjoyed the time period that it was written in, found that interesting. Let me know what you think. So that was August Book Club Choice, which was Mrs England, and that was by Stacey Halls. Now for September's, which out of all the books that I've chosen for the book clubs, this one is the one I am so excited for. It's called The List of Suspicious Things by Jenny Godfrey. And this is a new one. It came out this year, I think it was, or maybe the back end of last year. And it's been doing the rounds on Booktube. Oh, another one in Yorkshire. Yorkshire, 1979. Maggie Thatcher is Prime Minister. Drainpipe jeans are in and Miv is convinced that her dad wants to move their family down south because of the murders. Leaving Yorkshire and her best friend Sharon simply isn't an option. No matter the dangers of no matter the dangers lurking round their way, or the strangers at home that started the day, Miv's mum stopped talking. Perhaps if she could solve the case of the disappearing women, they could stay after all. So Miv and Sharon decide to make a list, a list of all the suspicious people and things down their street, people they know, people they don't. But their search. For the truth reveals more secrets in their neighbourhood, within their families and between each other than they ever thought possible. What if the real mystery Miv needs to solve is the one that lies much closer to home? So this is written during the times of the murders of Peter Sutcliffe who was known as the Yorkshire Ripper. And as we can see, what is here, there is a whole generation of northerners whose childhoods were haunted by the murderer Peter Sutcliffe. One of my most vivid early memories is of the day that he was captured, when it became clear my dad knew him. Whoa. I can still feel the shock of how close he got to my family. This book is in tribute to the victim survivors and those now adult children, of whom I am one. The list of suspicious things is my love letter to God's own country. I'm glad I read that out to you. That's the author's note. So, the author's dad knew Peter Sutcliffe. So there will be some great elements in this. Look at those end papers as well, the crows. Really looking forward to reading this. Are you going to join me? And it was written in, it was published in 2024, I thought it was this year. So it's a newbie and it's getting some really good reviews online. So the list of suspicious things by Jenny Godfrey is September's book club choice. And if you're new to my channel and new to my book clubs, how you do how we do this at the minute is we will all read this book in September, September 2024. And you can make notes of it. And once I've read it, I will do a video of it that will be put on this YouTube channel at the end of the month, of which you can join and watch and comment below. So you can also send me a paragraph, a short paragraph of what you thought of this book without spoilers, just in case I haven't got to the end, even though we kind of know some of the elements of it, um, to my email address, which is the thackeray's 82, 82 at gmail.com. It's below in the description box and pinned comment. Um, and the reason for this book club is to get people's interest in reading again and a sense of community that books can bring. So the more that we can join in with this, the more that we can comment in the comment section the more that you take part the more that we'll get out of it and the, and the connection of all reading a book at the same month and the energetic connection that that can give people and sense of community is vital for these times so yes september 2024 the list of suspicious things by jenny godfrey 
and I will put that below in the description and pinned comment if you didn't quite get all that. So thank you for watching. Please do like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.